This time last year, I was a comedian who had just found herself out of work and was in the process of slowly realising how little people would pay for a donations only Zoom show. And incidentally, if you're watching this and you are one of the people who sponsor me, please know that you are exceptional in being someone who pays for the content that they consume online because the vast majority of people don't and the impact that that is having on what media is available and who controls what media we access is huge. And it's another whole video's worth and I'll get there at some point. At this point in my life, it would be fair to say I'm a maths tutor with a hobby making videos. And that's okay. I'm looking forward to getting some gigs back in the diary for later this year and I can't wait to see some of you there in the audience and we'll do that when that happens. But I want to say something about what's happening in terms of A-levels and GCSEs. So normally at this time of year students would be getting ready for those exams. Um, but in February the government decided that there wouldn't be any exams and the government decided that teachers would assess students but they didn't provide any additional resources for teachers for them to do so, they didn't provide any extra funding, any extra members of staff. They were just like, ah, oh, you can do it. And then they announced that the results would be entirely fair and that students would get exactly the same grades that they would have got in any other year relative to the amount, I mean, which is a little bit pie in the sky, isn't it? It's a little bit like, well, you know, uh, we're just going to let people in the armed forces decide who we should be at war with. But don't worry, the chances of your civilian wedding being bombed will be exactly the same as they would be in any other year. The fact is, exams exist for a reason. And one of the main reasons exams exist is to prevent cheating. It is easier to cheat in a classroom test than it is in a big hall with invigilators. So we've created a system that benefits those who don't mind twisting or bending the rules, right? And that might be the sort of cheating that goes on on an individual pupil level, but let's not forget that how these assessments are put together and who makes the decisions is open to, I won't even call it cheating because it's like the way you do it affects the outcome. It's just open to interpretation. So some of the students I teach have been given a very short, very clear list of what subjects will be coming up in their tests. And others have got a very long list of subjects that might come up in their test. Well, it's a completely different scenario, whether I'm teaching them one or two topics that they know are gonna come up. Even if at the end of the day, it's the same questions, one group of students has a significant advantage over another. Um, some students have got like one maths test every two weeks. And so they've got way more time to prepare for what's coming up. There's all these different like variables. And on top of that, students have been told that it will also come down to their teacher's input. And we all feel like our oh, students hate exams, although between you and I, I always loved them. They're absolutely my freaking element exams. But we're told that students hate exams, but now my students are telling me quite reasonably that because their teacher's opinion will be included, every day they go into school is essentially an exam. That they feel like if they get asked a question in class and they don't get it right, that's them going down a grade. Like they feel like if they go to a lesson and they're tired or distracted and they can't really concentrate, that's them losing a grade. And on top of that, I think teachers are wonderful people and I know that the vast majority of them do their best to try and you know, be fair to every student, but it's impossible with a huge class of students to genuinely assess each one individually in great depth. So for instance, I have a student who has a brother at the same school as her, and her brother quite often gets into trouble and isn't very academic. And whenever she meets a new teacher and they find out her surname, they roll their eyes. Or they say something like, oh, or let's see how this goes, or oh, don't start anything then. I mean, yeah, teachers shouldn't do that, but we all do that. We have to make quick, we've all made an assumption about somebody based on who their family is. Like, I used to assume that Annunciata Rees Mogg was a terrible human being just because of who her brother is. But now I've read her Twitter feed and I realise that she really is a terrible human being in her own right. Um, 
and it's not fair on these students. I've got another student who's had four different maths teachers this year, so she still doesn't know which one's opinion will count and which one slash ones will be asked. And in fact, in the end, the school wrote to me and asked what I thought about her maths. And I like, I want to be as fair and as honest and all the rest, but at the same time, I'm being paid by the hour to get her through her maths GCSE. And it looks really bad on me if she screws the thing up. So I'm essentially being bribed to give her, you know, to say the most positive thing I possibly can about her. And you know, fortunately, she's a very smart academic clued up kid and I'm happy with my honest opinion. But if she was struggling and desperately wanted a certain grade, hmm, I feel terrible saying not really. It's not a reasonable situation and teachers are under huge amounts of pressure to demonstrate that they do well. And if they don't, if their students don't achieve certain grades, they can be in all kinds of trouble. So where is the incentive for them to, you know, to be brutally honest? And if you don't think teachers might occasionally twist the rules, let's look at, oh, the school that Boris Johnson went to, Eton. 2017, before any of this kicked off, a pupil at Eton decided to try and impress a girl. And if you can't see how closely this links to the mess that is our current Prime Minister, a student at Eton decided to impress a girl by sending her some of the exam questions that were going to come up in one of the exams. Because it turned out that the people who set the exams included one of the teachers who was at Eton and he had told them in advance what the questions were going to be and this boy thought it would make him popular with the ladies if he forwarded those on. Unfortunately, this girl went and reported it to the authorities and then students got their marks done a different way and blah, 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 blah. And of course, Eaton was like, this is a terrible one-off accidental incident that's never been repeated and never happens again and da, 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 da. But I mean, you know, rewind to that time when somebody else did Prince Harry's RA level. It's not a one-off. And this is why there's a problem with relying on in-class tests, teachers' opinions, and this continuous assessment thing, because exams have the advantage of being fair. Much as they're scary and unpleasant and a COVID risk, they're fair. And we have to find a way of helping students that is fair, because I don't have one single student right now who thinks that the process is going to be fair. And every single one of my students has a private tutor who is really, really good. And they still don't think they're going to get treated fairly. So what hope is there for all the others? And also, if you do know anybody who needs help with their A-level or GCSE maths, um, Uh, etc. And not only will I support your kid, but I will also um, bang on about their treatment until somebody does it better and fairer. See you next week.